Good day everyone. So for today's video, I'm going to be talking about oral cancer. So in this video, I'm going to be including um, introduction, etiology and pathogenesis, the clinical manifestations, risk factors, complications, diagnostic procedures, treatment and management, and lastly is the prognosis. So if you want to learn more about this video, please do continue watching and let's get started. So an introduction of oral cancer. Um, cancer is defined as the uncontrollable growth of cells that invade and causes damage to the surrounding tissues. And oral cancer or mouth cancer is a cancer that develops in the tissues of the mouth or the throat. And it belongs to a larger group of cancers called the head and the neck cancers. So this type of cancer is occurring most often in people over 40 years old and oral cancers are most often discovered after they've spread to the lymph nodes and the neck. Oral cancer is a major neoplasm worldwide and accounts for most head and neck cancers and it is theoretically should be largely preventable or detectable at an early stage. So here is an example photo of in the lip cancer and in the mouth cancer which has a white patches present and they're also present in the tongue. So this type of cancer can be life threatening if not diagnosed and treated properly or early and early detection is the key to surviving oral cancer and just like any other cancer so in continuation um, early oral cancer is asymptomatic which contributes to delayed diagnosis and any single ulcerated lesions persisting for more than three weeks should be regarded with suspicion and a biopsy should be performed. So just remember the pneumonics rule. R is the a red or the redness. U is if it's ulcerated. L is for the lump and E if it extends for three or more weeks. Next is, there are four stages of oral cancer. So the stage one is that the tumor is two centimeters or smaller and the cancer hasn't spread to the lymph nodes. The stage two is that the tumor is between two to four centimeters and cancer cells haven't spread to the lymph nodes. The third stage is that the tumor is either larger than four centimeters and hasn't spread to the lymph nodes or is any size and has spread to one lymph node but not to other parts of the body. So lastly, at stage four is that the tumor or any size and the cancer cells have spread to the nearby tissues and the lymph nodes or other body parts of the body. Next is the etiology of the disease, oral cancer. So we have smoking, excessive consumption of alcohol, um, family history of cancer, the human papillomavirus, and excessive sun exposure. So mouth cancer, a usual form when cells on the lips or in the mouth uh, develop changes or mutations in their DNA. And mouth cancer most commonly begin in the flat thin cells or the squamous cells that line in the lips and the insides of the mouth. And most oral 
cancers are squamous cell carcinomas. Though it is not clear what causes the mutations in squamous cells that lead to mouth cancer, but the doctors have identified factors that may increase the risk of mouth cancer. So in smoking, this, there are cigarettes or cigar or pipe smokers that are six times more likely than non-smokers to develop oral cancer. And then in excessive consumption of alcohol, the oral cancer are about six times or more common in drinkers than in non-drinkers. In the family history of cancer, of course, uh, the certain patterns of cancer may be seen within families since it is genetic. Um, the human papillomavirus is that the certain HPV strains are etiolo et etiologic risk for um, factors for oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma. And excessive sun exposure and sunlight exposure are um, predisposed to lip cancer, especially at young age. Next is the pathogenesis of oral cancer. So um, the region most commonly identified thus far have included some on the short arm of chromosome 3, TCG or tumor suppressors gene, which grown uncontrollably and it results to cancer. Um, term P16 on chromosome 9 and the TSG term TP53 on chromosome 17, but multiple other genes are also being discovered. And as well as damage to TSGs, cancer may also involve damage to other genes involved in growth control, and mainly those involved in cell signaling or the oncogenes, especially some on chromosome 11 and chromosome 17. And the changes in this and the other oncogenes can disrupt cell growth control and ultimately leading to the uncontrolled growth of the cancer. So moving on in a cell, um, the epithelium proliferates excessively due to the genetic change. And finally, epithelial cells grow down into underlying connective uh, tissue. And this is known as the invasion and is characteristic feature of malignancy and there will be an increased susceptibility due to the deficiency of iron and vitamins so it links to two which is the tumor cells continue to divide and destroy the underlying tissues and or the tumor will invade lymphatic vessels and spread into the cervical lymph nodes in the neck then next is connects to the tissue feels hard and would not function properly and uh, um, the tumor will invade lymphatic vessels and spreads into cervical lymph nodes in the neck are also known as the metastasis. Um, next is it links um, into two. Um, the tumor cells destroy the node and may spread out into the neck tissues and a node will be attached to the surrounding tissues and if the tumor has spread into the neck. So tobacco is a potent risk factor of oral cancer. An interaction uh, occurs between redox active metals in the saliva and the low reactive free radicals in the cigarette smoke. And that result may be um, that saliva loses its antioxidant capacity and instead becomes a potent pro-oxidant milieu. Next is the clinical manifestations of oral cancer. So this includes a lip or mouth sore that does not heal, a white or reddish patch on the inside of the mouth, loose teeth, a growth or a lump inside the mouth, mouth and ear pain, and explained weight loss, difficulty or painful swallowing, and the voice changes like 
cracking or hoarseness. So throat cancers grow in the organs that help you swallow, speak, and breathe. And these diseases tend to grow quickly. That's why getting treated early on gives the best chance to beat them and keep a good quality of life. Next is the risk factors. So in gender, men are five times more likely to get it than women. Age, most people get diagnosed after the age of 65. And in a race, uh, mostly is African-American men that are at the biggest risk. Next is chemical exposure. Uh, this includes being around obsessos, nickel and sulfuric acid fumes and tobacco use of any kind, including cigarettes, cigars, pipes, um, chewing tobacco and snuff, and among others, and the sexually transmitted disease, the human papillomavirus. Next is the complications of oral cancer. So we have dysphagia, and if you're having problems swallowing, a speech and language therapist will assess your swallowing reflex using a test called a video fluoroscopy. Um, it involves swallowing food and liquid that contains a special dye while a type of x-ray is being taken. Next is speech problems. So like swallowing, the ability to speak clearly involves complex interaction between muscles, bones, and tissue including the teeth, our tongue, lips, and the soft palate. Surgery and radiotherapy for mouth cancer can affect this process and making it difficult to uh, pronounce certain sounds. Or one can go to a speech therapist. Next is emotional impact. So emotional impact of living with mouth cancer can be significant and many people experience a roller coaster effect. This emotional changes can sometimes trigger depression and the signs that one may be depressed include uh, feeling down or hopeless during the past month and no longer taking pleasure in the things that they usually enjoy. Um, also, we have dry mouth, cavities, facial deformities, and malocclusions. Next is the diagnostic procedures that can be used in um, diagnosing um, oral cancer. So, firstly, uh, the doctor or the dentist will perform a physical exam. And if the doctor finds any tumors, growth, or suspicious lesions, they'll perform a brush biopsy or a tissue biopsy. So first is x-rays. X-ray is used um, to see if the cancer cells have spread to the jaw, chest, or in the lungs. Next is the CD scan. It reveals any tumors in the mouth, throat, neck, lungs, or elsewhere in the body. The PET scan is to determine if the cancer has traveled to the lymph nodes or the other organs. The MRI scan is to show a more accurate image of the head, neck, and determine the extent or stage of the cancer. And endoscopy is to examine the nasal passages, sinus, inner throat, windpipe, and the trachea. Next is the treatment and management of oral cancer. So first we have radiation therapy. Um, radiation therapy uses high energy beams such as x-rays and protons to kill the cancer cells. Next is chemotherapy, which is common. Um, it is a treatment that uses chemicals to kill the cancer cells. Next is the tar targeted drug therapy. So cetuximab is one targeted therapy used to treat mouth cancer in certain situations. Next is we have immunotherapy. Um, it uses your immune system to fight cancer and your body disease fighting immune system may not attack the cancer because the cancer cells produce proteins that 
bind the immune system cells. Next is the surgery. Uh, treatment for early stages usually involves surgery to remove the tumor and cancerous lymph nodes. Um, next is nutrition. So getting the right nutritionist can help you plan a food menu that will help gent that are gentle on the mouth and the throat and will provide the body with the right calories, vitamins, and minerals that are needed to heal. And we have the prognosis. So oral um, cancer prognosis is that overall, 60% of all individuals with oral cancer will survive for like five years or more. And the earlier the stage at diagnosis, the greater the chance of survival after the treatment. And in fact, the five-year overall survival rate in those with stage one and two oral cancers is usually 70 to 90 percent. And that's all for today's video. I hope you've learned from it and thank you and I will see you when I see you.